What's up, Schwartz Force? Welcome back to the channel. I missed you guys. And uh, real quick, before we get into this video, which is a first, a kind of new concept I want to try, watches and wax, or wax and watches. I'm not sure how I'm going to arrange those. Um, but before we get into that, I just want to say a huge and sincere thank you to all of you guys and gals out there who left me comments on my last video, of course, explaining the situation with my mother and then going forward, kind of what to expect. It meant a lot to me and to my family. So thank you for all the support. It was really nice to see familiar names and faces as well as some new ones. So thanks again. Now in this episode, watches and wax. What exactly? I had done this on Instagram, uh, which of course I'll link down below. I kind of had this idea of pairing vinyl records in my collection, both new and old, and then um, pairing them up with a watch and talking a little bit about both. So you kind of get to see a bit of my style in music and relate to that. And then of course the watches itself. So if you're not into vinyl records or if you're just boring and don't like music for whatever reason, you can skip and go straight to this timestamp that'll take you to the watches. Now today the watch we're looking at is the Matthew and Son or Mass Watches Irukanji. This is a micro brand based out of Australia. Awesome watch and a really cool story which I'll get into later in the video about that. Now for the first record that I'm going to uh, kind of pair up, it is Toadies. Hopefully you guys can see this. Toadies, the album is Rubberneck. This is of course a classic in my opinion. This album was released in 1994. So this one here is a 25th anniversary, 180 gram remastered um, version. So really cool. My favorite track on this album is Tyler. Now that has changed, you know, throughout the time. I mean, 1994, I was 10 when this album came out. Um, I have seen Toadies play live multiple times throughout my years. So a great live band. You should definitely check them out. If you have not heard Toadies before, their music, I'm gonna actually link uh, down in the description. I have a vinyl channel and I'll put that song, Tyler. I'll, I'll link that down for you below so you can check it out. Um, great band and based out of Texas, I think Fort Worth, if I'm not mistaken. So let me know if you are a fan of the Toadies and uh, what's your favorite track off of that album. I think I know the top three most people would pick, but I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. And then of course, send some love to my vinyl channel if you'd like to follow that as well. I really appreciate it. Now, quick couple quick shout outs. First off, I'm rocking my Tudor Bros. Look at that, Omar hit it. Tudor Bros! <laughs> Got my Tudor Bros shirt. Thank you, Omar. Uh, Timeless Sneakers and Watches channel. I'm gonna link him down below. So give him a follow. He's part of the Tudor Bros page that he, myself, Miguel, and P. Ross created on Instagram. And you don't have to own a Tudor. It's not some elite club or anything like that. If you are a fan of Tudor watches, old and new, then give our page a follow, show some support. Of course, I'd appreciate it. I know the guys would appreciate it as well, but just wanted to uh, shout out to Omar for making these awesome shirts for me and the boys. Now, quick wristwatch check. In case if you are new to the channel and you've already been with us this long, thanks for sticking around. Uh, my name's Dave, may the Schwartz be with you. And hey, did you know, it is a great day to wear a watch. Today I have on the Alpha Paul Newman Daytona homage. This thing is absolutely stunning. This one is from my buddy Brian Trump out in Aruba. I will link his pages down below as well. We did a swap. I don't wanna go into it too much because I wanna save that for the video I do on this watch, but I will tell you this, mechanical hand wind with that seagull movement, um, mechanical chronograph, let me correct myself, is just stunning. I love the faux tina that it has and all the kind of characteristics and it being used has a couple bumps and scratches which just gives it more character so this is going to stay in my collection for sure now let's flip the camera around and take a look at the irukanji watch and how kind of how this came to be all right without further ado let's get into it all right guys, so here we have the boxing of the Irukanji watch. Now, I got to know Matthew, the owner of the brand, and of course this stands for Matthew and Son. So his son Tate has worked with him and he's included him in the, the whole process of designing the watches, coming up with ideas. And I just love that backstory of this brand. It's one of my favorite micro brands and they just put out quality work and amazing designs. And they have since the issue of this, Kickstarter for the Irukanji, they released, of course, a field watch, a dress watch, 
and uh, they're working on a pilot's watch now. So make sure you follow them both on Instagram check out their website as well. But the way I came into getting the Irukandji to review is um, I did a live stream with Average Joe Watch Reviews and that's how I got to meet Matthew and learn a little bit more about the brand. And he had mentioned this thing called the Tiny Time Tool, which as you can see here is a solid stainless steel tool that contains a combination of either a spring bar fork and a flathead screwdriver end or a spring bar pin for drilled lug holes and the flathead screwdriver end. Now you can select between this brush steel color or a black PVD coated version as well as you see here. And they are quite hefty and have a good weight to them and the CNC machining on them is done really well. And I have not traveled much this year but I will always have one of these with me for future travels. You know, they have a drilled hole for a key ring so it's a discreet way to have this on your keys and never be without the ability to swap out bracelets and straps which I love. I had asked Matt if he was okay sending one of these for me to check out, and he ended up surprising me with not only two of them, but included the Irukandji dive watch as a gift, so I am absolutely blown away by his generosity, and this watch will definitely stay in my collection, so let's take a look and see why. Now, it does come in a standard kind of cardboard box, has some nice uh, branding there on the front, and then if we open that up, you'll see inside is a canvas watch roll. Holds four watches, has black leather accenting as well with the branding there, and then of course just a simple stainless steel button that holds it together. If we open it up, inside we're going to see the watch, which I have on the bracelet right now, on the stainless steel bracelet. And we'll take a look at that. And then of course there is also a strap included. The color that Matt surprised me with is their Sea Storm Red dial version. And I'm so glad he did. I consider this one to be kind of their transitional option out of the eight colors to choose from. They have some really bright, vivid colors that give a more eclectic vibe. And then of course you have your more traditional colors like black and blue. But I think this red is right in that sweet spot between all the options. You can see with the studio lighting here, there is a bit of reflection off of the dome sapphire crystal. However, there is a very nice layer of AR coating that's applied underneath the crystal to assist with legibility in various lighting conditions. And we'll come back to the dial shortly, but turning the watch to the side, you can see this unique case shape that's made out of full 316L solid stainless steel. Now this watch has a fully satin finish to it, so you can see that even the lugs are brushed as well. And even the coin edge on the bezel has brushing on the sides and the fronts of these deep grooves. And that will of course allow for an easy grip when rotating the bezel. It is a 120 click unidirectional bezel. And I'm impressed with how rock solid this bezel action is. There's absolutely zero back play on it. And it's one of those things that when you experience it, you know the build quality is there and no corners were cut with this piece. Again, looking at it from the side, you get a glimpse of the inspiration that Tate and Matt took from the jellyfish, giving a seamless transition from the bulbous dome sapphire to the bezel, which then continues to slope downward towards the bottom of the case before curving back under towards the case back. The lugs are aggressively angled, which helps with the watch wearing smaller than it looks, and it allows for the bracelet ends to dangle downward like the tentacles of the Irukandji. By the way, if you've never seen the Irukandji before, all you need to do is flip the watch over and you can see it engraved in its true form at less than one inch wide. These are very small jellyfish out in the wild, so I thought it was really cool how they were able to put an engraving of it on the case back. Now on the screw down case back, you'll notice this blend of high polish and bead blasted textures. You will also see, of course, the model name, an indication of key specs such as stainless steel construction, sapphire crystal, water resistance of 200 meters, a true dive watch rating, and the automatic movement being used, which is the Seiko NH35. You can opt for this robust solid stainless steel bracelet, which is a riveted oyster style with brushing on the fronts of the links and high polish on the edges and sides of the links. It gives me some of those Tudor Black Bay 58 vibes, so you know I'm already a fan of this style. Now, I must warn that while the bracelet uses screws instead of push pins, sizing this bracelet can be a bit of a challenge as you'll need two screwdrivers and a whole lot of patience to get the screws removed and reinstalled. But that said, once you have it sized, you are good to go. And if your wrist should expand or shrink a bit, you'll be happy to see that you have six micro adjustment spots on the clasp. The clasp does have nice mass branding on it with the logo and it's a fully milled and robust clasp. It locks in with a hearty click and also has a safety latch to keep the watch secured on your wrist. Let's get some measurements for this one, which I think may surprise you as the watch can be considered unisex. 
And we have a case width of just under 42 millimeters. However, the width of the bezel is right at about 38 millimeters. The lug to lug height comes out right under 46 millimeters. And this is going to allow for the wrist presence to really seem toned down on this diver. The way the lugs are angled will let the bracelet or strap come straight down, which is necessary for those smaller wrists out there. The measurements of the case, including the crown at four o'clock, come out to 45 millimeters. Now the watch does not feature a standard crown position of three o'clock, and instead you can choose to have it positioned at four o'clock as you see here, or at 10 o'clock. It is a screw down crown, so there is not a need of crown guards, which gives a more sleek and minimalist look overall. The lug to lug measurement is also 20 millimeters, so you have plenty of options for strap swaps. First, let me show you how this watch wears with the bracelet on my seven inch wrist. I know some prefer metal bracelets only, and this one will not disappoint, but for those out there who are more like me and prefer straps, let's take a look at a few of my favorites to pair with the Irukandji. This here is the two piece nylon NATO strap that came with the watch. I like that it avoids the bulkiness that you may experience with a single pass NATO. So this option is great if you do have smaller wrists or if you don't like the rising effect of a watch head on the wrist that happens when using a standard NATO strap. I like the simplistic aesthetic of the strap. However, I usually tend to opt for something a bit more substantial, such as this Artem luxury sailcloth strap. Robust and built for any environments you throw it in, I am such a big fan of these straps for just about any diver. And for a more classic pairing, you can't go wrong with the Bond NATO. Here you can see that rising effect on the wrist that I mentioned earlier, but this doesn't bother me personally, and I think it gives just enough pop to the watch without taking away from the bright red dial. And saving what I think is the best for last is the Strapsco Rubber Rolex Aftermarket Strap. It surprised me with how well it paired on this watch. It has the Oyster Flex style vents on the underside, which are comfortable, and then it has the straight ends instead of a curved end, so it works so well together with this case. And the deployment clasp is unsigned, but done in full satin stainless steel finishing, which also ties in with the case finishing just right. Now moving up close on this dial, you can start to appreciate the brilliant sunburst effect, which will give you colors ranging from orange to black in different angles of lights and shadows. The Ray Hot is also red, and instead of being sloped, it runs straight down from the bezel to the dial and has printed minute and hour markers in white. The dial has circular hour markers and these wide triangle wedges at 12, 6, and 9, each with a raised bit of BGW9 Super Luminova applied, there is mass branding printed at 12 o'clock, and then of course the model name Irukandji along with 200 meter water resistance indication at 6 o'clock. The Seiko NH35 automatic movement powering this watch is a three-handed movement with date complication. The date is located at the traditional 3 o'clock position. It has a nice raised stainless steel date box bordering the date window. Printing of the date is crisp and clear, so no complaints there. The second hand is a thin needle shape with a counterbalance in red with a loomed lollipop at the end. The minute and hour hands are baton shaped with a syringe tip, and if you look closely, you'll see that the Superluminova paint that fills the hands has a red tinge to it as well, which I think is unique and really cool to see. The loom is applied not just to the dial, but also to the ceramic bezel insert. And while bright blue upon a full charging, it does tend to fade a bit quickly. Taking a look at the movement, for those of you who are already familiar with the Seiko NH35, you know that it beats at 21,600 vibrations per hour, and the range of accuracy of these within spec, I believe, are around minus 40 to 20 seconds per day. So this particular one is ranging from around minus 8 to minus 13 seconds per day, which is fine. Now the amplitude is a bit weak. We usually like to see that over 280 or so, and the beat error is a slight bit high. Generally, you want to see this under 0.5, so I'm sure I could get this over to a watchmaker to fix those issues, but for me, this is not a deal breaker, and the NH35 still is tried and true as a workhorse movement. All right, so there you have it, my full review on the Mass Matthew & Son Irukandji watch again. Thank you so much to Matt, the owner, and of course his son Tate for designing such a cool dive watch and sending one to me to uh, take a look at and to keep as part of my collection. I really do appreciate that. And of course, sending in the tiny time tool for review as well. So of course, I'm going to put a link down below if you want to pick up one of the tiny time tools for yourself. Uh, Mass has also introduced their field watch and their dress watch. So definitely check out their Instagram for more photos on upcoming projects. And of course, if you like this video, please guys give it a thumbs up. That really does help out my channel. Now, if you haven't joined the Schwartz Force yet, it's not too late. You can tap my logo over here. That 
that'll get you subscribed. And if you want to see more videos like this, please check this one out. I know you'll enjoy it. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you guys and gals. As always, may the shorts be with you. Take care.